Hi, good afternoon, and thank you for joining us here for another segment of Wildlife Wednesday. My name's Rachel, and today we're going down to the hospital to meet up with Missy Fox, one of Crohn's certified veterinary technicians, to talk about the importance of sedation in patient care. Now, if you're unfamiliar with the term sedation, um, it's uh, when crow chemically uh, calms an animal, when we are trying to either provide medical treatments, cytologies, testing, physical therapy, etc., for the patients. Because when animals come into crow, unfortunately they are oftentimes here as a result of a negative human interaction. And so even the mere presence of people trying to give them bandages and medications can make them stressed out. And so sedation is an important part of the treatment process that keeps them safe during recovery as well as our staff safe. Okay, so let's go meet Missy down there. So we're anesthetizing our little red-bellied woodpecker at this time. He just came in a little bit of go. Um, he was in a apparent fight with another woodpecker and he has fallen on the ground. So we are putting him under anesthesia to take x-rays because he is not going to lay there as a wild animal and let us just take x-rays of him. A cat or dog you can calm with your voice, pet, things like that, but a wild animal things who are a predator coming at them. So a lot of our patients, we sedate or we also anesthetize for our x-rays. So this is what this little red belly woodpecker is getting right now. Um, we have various size masks to, to give them the best um, anesthesia. They basically, you don't want a bunch of dead space in here. So the smaller the patient, the smaller the mask. And we have to MacGyver quite a few for our different size patients. And so this is an inhalant gas that you're giving them for anesthesia. Exactly. This guy is getting isofluorine, which is a common veterinary anesthesia used. Um, it's a gas anesthesia, and it's run by the oxygen tank, which is over here. And this is our vaporizer. Um, this is all part of the anesthesia system. So it's a pretty simple system. It just has oxygen and then the gas, and the oxygen drives the gas to the patient. And then the patient exhales out the gas, and it is filtered into this canister down below. Some clinics have huge scavenger systems, which take the anesthesia gas out of the building. But because we have such a tiny little patient here, uh, we don't need to have a huge system like that. And it's also very expensive. Are there other types of anesthesias other than just isofluorine? Yes, so in our surgery suite, we have SIBO fluorine, which is a, a more expensive and safer um, gas anesthetic. Uh, they do use that in human medicine. And the animals wake up really quickly on that gas, but we usually save that for our surgeries. Okay, and then other than gases, are there other types of ways you can anesthetize a patient? So we can sedate some of our patients. Some of the mammals we get in, especially a huge snarling adult raccoon, for example, we can't reach into the cage and pick them up and put them on a gas mask like this. Um, those patients have to be sedated with injectable medications, just like that they'll do for a cat or dog that has to have anesthesia or surgery. So the vets will go ahead and pull up the sedation and we'll go into the cage and inject it. And a lot of times the raccoons, we use a huge pole, a syringe pole, so we don't get bitten by a raccoon because we're never sure if it's a rabies animal or what's going on with a rabies vector raccoon. So we're in the surgical suite here. I have a bunch of cool things to show you. So we sedate animals for several reasons. One reason is, of course, a raccoon that comes in that is snarling, growling, then trapped in a cage. We can't reach in there and grab that patient out to take a look at what's going on with them. So we'll have to do injectable sedation with those guys. So we have this long pole syringe here, and we can fill the syringe with the appropriate meds that we decide works best on raccoons. And we can go into the cage that they're in, if it's a trap or whatever type of cage somebody got the raccoon into, and we can push the syringe down and we can inject that raccoon. Um, that will relax that raccoon enough where we can be safe and take that raccoon out. 
put him on the table, do a full physical exam while he's unconscious, basically. Uh, we hook him up to the gas anesthesia, then we can take x-rays. Because what the person thinks may be wrong with that animal may be something completely different. A lot of times we get raccoons that are stumbling around, they can't walk well, they think, oh, he's been hit by car. A lot of times it's a sign of distemper, and also could be a sign of rabies. So we always want to be very careful when we're working with a rabies vector animal. And sedation is really helpful with those guys, and then anesthesia. So another thing we do injectable um, sedation for animals is if they're having physical therapy in the hospital. So if you have a fracture where you have pins in your arm, we go and get our own physical therapy done. Same with the animals here that are recovering from a pinning surgery or even a wound that actually caused an issue with the wing skin, let's say, which is important for flying. So those guys will get physical therapy and we give them a little injectable midazolam, which is a relaxant. It's similar to diazepam um, that a human would take. So it just takes the edge off a little bit so we can get that animal out of the cage. We don't have to fully anesthetize them under anesthesia, meaning they're unconscious. So we can take that wing and stretch it out into physical therapy. Something kind of cool we use here is this goniometer, which helps us measure the wings and to make sure that the animal can have perfect flight when they leave our hospital. So sedation for that is really important. If a patient has surgery and it's the next day where we want to clean the pins, sometimes at that point, because it's very unstable, that fracture, we want to go ahead and completely anesthetize them. So we'll give them pain meds, but then also put them under gas anesthesia. So it's easier for us to move that wing around and clean those pin sites without the animal flapping it when it's really unstable the day after surgery. But every day, of course, that wing starts to heal or the leg starts to heal, and then we can just do sedation for them. So now that we just talked a bit about sedation, we're going to talk about anesthesia, which is fully taking that animal to unconsciousness. So sedation is in between us being wide awake and being unconscious. This is actually being unconscious. So a lot of times when animals come into crow, they have something majorly wrong with them, especially a fracture if they've been hit by car. So when those guys come in, they're usually an acute case, meaning it just happened. So they're really neurologically with it. So we can take those guys back to the x-ray table and we can put them under anesthesia. We use isofluorine which is a cheaper anesthesia they use in vet med, um, and we knock the animal unconscious. We can take perfect x-rays so the vets can see what's going on with that animal. In surgery, which we have here, we have sevoflurane, which is a more expensive gas anesthesia, and this is what they actually use in human medicine. So we use that in our surgical suite for when a patient's under anesthesia for a longer procedure because it's safer, and they also wake up a lot faster as well. So those are our two different gas anesthesias we actually have here at Crow, and we use them in different aspects. Um, we also will, if an animal is in really bad condition, of course, we'll anesthetize them before they get euthanized, because it's a very stressful thing for an animal to be riding in a box being caught by a human. Uh, also, we want to keep in mind that when we're working with wild animals, what uh, one vet put it, which was kind of neat, is picture Godzilla picking you up and putting you in a box, and you don't know if Godzilla is going to do something to you, and then they take you out of the box and are looking at you. So it's always an, a predator attacking them when we're in contact with a wild animal, which a lot of us want to comfort them like we do for a cat or dog, but that's not appropriate for a wild animal. It's very stressful for them. So to take them down from the extreme stress they've gone through, we'll anesthetize them to get a better exam. So when we get an animal in a crow, for example, an adult squirrel, we all know that they have gigantic rodent-type teeth. So we don't necessarily grab that adult squirrel out of the box. We a lot of times put them in this induction chamber, which we can hook right up to the gas anesthesia, which hooks up right like this to the box, and we can anesthetize that squirrel and put a towel over the top so it's not stressed with them looking at us. And when they're unconscious, we can take them out, take an x-ray, and do a better exam on them because we don't want to get bitten by an adult squirrel, but we also don't want this adult squirrel screaming and really scared of us. So this is something that's really helpful for, you know, a wild adult squirrel. We actually see sea turtles here. So when they may, might need some um, oxygen, which we use our anesthesia machine for, we can put this over a sea turtle's face. 
because in wildlife medicine, you do not have anything the size you need. Some stuff they do have for small animals, for vets, um, but a lot of times we're just MacGyvering. These are some endotracheal tubes, so for intubation, for surgery, this would be like a pelican or a great blue heron or someone with a long neck like an egret. And then all the way down to a tiny little songbird um, or a tortoise. Surprisingly, turtles and tortoises have really tiny glottises. And when we knock them out for anesthesia, we want to make sure that we use the right size tube. Something interesting with birds and reptiles is they have complete tracheal rings. So when they're breathing and they're under anesthesia and we have an ET tube, we do not use this cuffed one they use for humans and for other mammals. We have C-shaped tracheal rings and we don't want to use those with birds and reptiles because we can damage their trachea. So that's also something we take into consideration when we're anesthetizing these animals uh, for surgery. Another thing that we do often is turtle tortoise repair, which I just talked about. But those guys are really hard to anesthetize. So we have to do injectable sedation for them. And then we will pry that little beak open when they're unconscious and then place our ET tube at that time. And then, like I said, we always do our surgery here using the SIVO. So it's a quick procedure. Something interesting about them when they're waking up, we don't keep them on the oxygen on the anesthesia machine. We actually breathe them back to life with an ambu bag. So it's just room air. So reptiles like to have just room air and it causes them to take a breath when they're not getting too much oxygen and then we can let their um, basically their CO2 build up and then they'll start breathing and waking up quicker. Thanks Missy for sharing that wonderful information with us about sedation. If you enjoyed what you learned about on this week of Wildlife Wednesday, feel free to click the link above and continue to support our cause. Thank you so much and have a good day.